Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Sorry that this is late. Basically yesterday. Normally I post at night time for me. But yesterday my parents they didn't tell me until night time. But they had a dinner to go to. Which meant that um I was in charge of getting my brothers to sleep. And so well not in charge of both of them. My mom one of them to sleep before she left at 7.30 and then the other one I had to get in bed by around I had to get him to get in bed by around 8.15 he went in bed in like 8.20 because he did a bit of negotiation but that was fine, it's only 5 minutes um, and I don't think my parents would mind that and then I stayed up for a little bit and went to sleep as well and they got home at some point I don't know, um, I just, they, so what I did was I locked the door, but it's already locked from the, in, from the outside, and they, um, I don't even know what I'm saying, it's early morning, I'm posting this at 6.30, um, I slept past my alarm at 5, which is annoying, <sighs> hey, what can you do, a uh, picture right now, if you guys remember that video outside, so it's not, I'm guessing not all of you watched it. There was this cat that I called to that basically when I said Stormy, it would always, um, it would always show up at the garden. And that is Stormy in this picture. Just, yeah. And I miss the cat because we're not there anymore. We're not in that country anymore. Anyways, let's get started. Link to a Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction. Adrian saw her and was immediately concerned. This was his friend, and she was a hero. Everyone saw how his father made the wish and heard about the female baker that passed. They heard that she was depressed. They saw the footage of her final battle. They realized how much responsibility was put on a teenager. People realized she never left her house. They interviewed her father. They heard the same thing. She had a rough few years because of him and losing her mother the day she was badly injured and had her battle, her biggest lose, was hard on her. As for now, she stays in her room most of the time, refusing to eat, sleep, drink, shower, basically anything that keeps us human. She is a shell of what she used to be, but I'll keep trying to cheer her up. Thank you, Paris, for all your, thank you, Paris, for all your support, her father would say. Love was endless for the Dupin Cheng family, especially for Marinette. That didn't change. That didn't change anything, though. That didn't change her, though. As for the aggressed family, the hatred poured out, not to Adrian or the recently awakened Emily, but to Gabriel Agress. People complaining that just because you lose someone doesn't make his actions less horrid. People talking about how they'd lost wives, husbands, children, grandparents, best friends. At first, Gabriel hid it from Emily, but when she opened the TV one day, she was furious. She researched the events of the final few years. She saw the articles on the young teen, the same age as her son. She confronted him and got divorced. You're a monster, not the man I married. The man, that man cared. He cared for the world and he loved people. You terrorized Paris, took advantage of people's emotions, and now a girl no older than our son is suffering without her mother. I hate you. She rushed out of her house. She went to the Fancheng bakery and found her son on the way. She explained what happened and apologized that she divorced her so quickly. It's fine. Father has has been very distant and cold for years. He only talked to me when I did wrong. I wouldn't mind leaving him with you. The girl I'm going to see helped me through it. He smiled sadly. Adrian knocked on the door and looked very concerned when he saw her. What do you want, Adrian? I'm not in the mood to talk, she said. Her voice was small and broken, nothing like it used to be. Me and my mom, we were worried. She just got divorced because of, you know. Uh, we just wanted to see you, he said softly, looking into her, those eyes that were ni that you that were nice and bright and full of life, but were now dull. I'm so sorry, dear. I never would have thought the man I married would do that. You did not deserve to fight 
to fight for so long. You did not deserve what happened to your family. She said, no doubt in her voice, thank you, but nothing changes what happened. I failed and he won. There is nothing else to be said. Thanks for coming over. She closed the door. They left, albeit reluctantly. I'm guessing she's had better days, her mother said. Her son's expression was confused, concerned, and planning. She used to be so alive. Her dad's right. She is a shell of what she used to be. I can't leave her like this. We are going to help her. Okay, that's where we're going to end it. Bit of a cliffhanger. No, you hate him. Sorry. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> I plan to post another video today because um, I'm uh, going to start writing these when I get home instead and I'm going to start trying to write more than one in a day so that I can have a schedule planned out and I already have two ready for today well it was supposed to be one for yesterday one for today but it wasn't voiced over yet so today when I go to school and um, like you know when I have free time even outside I'll use my phone I have google docs on my phone as well I can write there and yeah I'll try and get as many prepared as possible come home film the voiceover for a couple and schedule upload them so that each of them come out at the same time one day after another and you guys don't miss out on your daily uploads because even if I get distracted that day I have something planned but I will try my best not to get distracted um yeah this picture was taken at that camp that I've shown a couple times before. A random flower I found behind a tree in the garden. You can see it here. It's a pr it's quite a pretty plant. And yeah, it was just in like the garden and I thought I'd take a picture because the actual garden itself is quite clear. You can see it in the back there. It's just, you know, grass, but on the edge of the garden, there are so many different um plants. There's like orange um trees and t these like sp oh, spiky trees and there's some purple flowers and there's these bushes and yeah it's just it's fun and this is one that i saw that i hadn't seen before so i decided to take a picture of it um uh, da, da, da. if you guys can't tell and couldn't tell from the video i'm kind of tired and I'm also in my bed right now, so, um, question of the day, that's what we need to do, that's what I'm forgetting, um, <clears throat> let's do, switch lives with one person in the world who would it be like if you could switch lives for one day with anyone in the world um we'll do dead or alive so anyone in the world anyone you've ever seen or anything who would you trade lives with i think i would trade lives with one of the I'll trade life with someone uh, hmm I actually don't know I think I trade lives with a rich person just to see what it's like because, like, you know those stories that everyone wishes to be princess and they actually do it and they see it so much, like, responsibility and how boring it is and stuff? I don't want to see if it actually is that. But, it, so, like, I don't know, the Queen of England or something. And I want to see how, what's it like to live life to have such a high position but also have so many rules on you? And, yeah, if it's just a day, I feel like that would be quite cool. And I'd have some inside information on the palace and stuff. And, and yeah, that's it. Bye.